Shove It Squad, welcome to the Hawks Halloween Special. Today we're going to rank every casket match to happen on US TV. And no, this isn't just WWE, we actually put some effort in unlike certain other channels. And because it's Halloween, it's spooky graveyards and stuff. I've gone above and beyond for this episode and I've dug up top 10 wrestling to join me for this video. Who remembers him? No one? Oh well, let's give him a chance to speak, but if he goes too far, I'll jab him with my beat. Yes now, it is me, Top 10 Wrestling here, and I am here to help out the good brother Marky D123, who is taking on one hell of a task, ranking every casket match. So I'm here to talk about 5 matches throughout the video, just to help the guy out, because he's got so much to do already, and yeah, I've got a lot to discuss. Let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> Some random televised house show, aka Superstars in 1994, The Undertaker vs Jim Neidhart in a casket match. I was intrigued when I saw this one, but little did I know, it was going to be a waste of time. Taker boots him down straight away. Jim Neidhart suddenly ducks a clothesline, but it doesn't keep Taker down, he keeps getting up. <laughs> Neidhart hits a power slam and the ref actually counts it. Someone smacked this guy up a brick. Well, apparently the confusion was that the casket wasn't actually at ringside and Bearer had to leave mid-match and go and get it. The anvil ends up in the casket and he stays in there for a while whilst freaking out. Then Neidhart runs away and the match has ended in a count out. That's the only time you'll see a casket Shut match it, end man. by count out on this list. It's an S. Next up, Undertaker vs Yokozuna from the Royal Rumble 1994. The two come face to face to start the match and what a sight it is. Taker sends Yoko outside and he runs into the ring post like a dummy. And the two get back into the ring and start taking it to each other, with Yoko getting control and taking the upper hand as he tries to get Taker into the casket, but is unable to. Taker makes a short comeback, but Yoko takes him right back down with a belly to belly, and then Taker sits up before hitting the worst choke slam I've ever seen, followed by a very weird looking DDT. Taker gets Yoko in the casket and looks to win the match, but Crush runs out and attacks Taker, stopping it from happening. He takes care of Crush, but then Kabuki and someone else whose name I didn't catch run out and Taker takes care of them too. Then out comes Bam Bam and it's 4 on 1 while Yoko is still out in the casket. Then Adam Bomb comes out. Why is there so many people in the ring and how is Taker managing to fight them all off? Yoko finally makes it out of the casket as even more people come in. Taker is rolled in the casket, but he manages to fight out of it despite there being a whole Royal Rumble in the ring right now. The urn is then open and smoke starts coming out, and the commentary say that this is indication that Taker is losing his power. What? Everyone in the ring hits a top rope move on Taker, then he is rolled in the casket for Yokozuna to win the match and retain the WWF title. This man Undertaker just got bullied. My word. And then after the match, even more weirdness as the casket starts smoking and then on the Titan Tron, a video of Taker in the casket is shown and he gives a whole little monologue saying he will not rest in peace. Bro, this is so chaotic. I don't even know what to think of that match. It was so, it was one of them, it's so bad, it's Shut good it kind down. of matches. I think I love it. Okay, I never realised there were actually two last rights matches in TNA. This one's coming for 2018. It's Ali taking on Sue Young, the only woman's entry on this list. And you'd think it'd be revolutionary. Well, it isn't. There's nothing to say about this one, unfortunately. Ali does a running clothesline off the coffin on the outside. Then a Russian leg sweep connects, but Ali can't put Sue Young away. Who's ready for one of the ugliest, fakest looking hardcore spots of all time? Ali throws a chair, which Sue Young catches, and then they pause, and Ali connects for Code Breaker into the chair. This almost puts Sue Young away again. Ali super kicks her off the apron, and she collapses into the coffin again, but again it's not over. Sue Young puts on the mandible claw, and the coffin lid falls and hits her on the head. She doesn't break her grip, though, and Ali is knocked out in the coffin. The match was a pile of bird turds, and I almost missed all the crazy effects from the other Last Rites match. You'll see that later in this video, by the way. It can shove it, I didn't love it. WWF In Your House 5, 1995. King Mabel vs The Undertaker, who has his Phantom of the Opera mask on. This one sucks, just skip it. Mabel starts out with headbutts before The Taker starts squashing him in the corner. Mabel tries to turn it around with a sidewalk slam, but Taker sits up. Big Mabel takes it down a couple more times, but The Taker just keeps sitting up, most conveniently when Mabel is about to splash him from the top. King Mo distracts Taker on the outside, which allows Mabel to hit a belly to belly, and that's a lot of belly. Mabel tries to flatten the dead man into a pancake next. He's too lazy to put the Taker into the casket himself though, and he asks Mo to do it. Mabel thinks it's game over, but he doesn't bother to shut the lid, so Taker escapes. Taker tries multiple clotheslines next before Mabel finally goes down. 
Next up we get one of the lowest choke slams I think I've ever seen. It's not over yet though because Mo attacks the Undertaker. The dead man also gives him a choke slam and rolls him into the casket along with Mabel. The lid is closed and it's over. So Mabel went in the casket just once but was too weak to fight out of it again. Not a good one, oh, isn't it? Kane versus The Undertaker from Raw in 1998. This one isn't hanging around like many of the entrants on this list. Taker hits his diving clothesline and makes the cover but there's no ref and no pinfalls either. Kane gives him the power slam to try and knock some sense into him. Undertaker DDTs him back but it has little to no effect. The brothers brawl inside the casket with Kane getting the better of his brother. Taker smacks him in the nutsack region to regain the advantage. The Undertaker delivers a second DDT in the space of two minutes into the casket. Both men are now in the casket with the lid closed. Taker and Kane destroy the casket from the inside. This is pretty much the end of the match as everyone leaves and chases after Paul Bearer. It could have been great, but it left me full of oh hate. Man, it's an ex. Shove it! Raw 2008, The Undertaker vs Mark Henry casket match. This is one of those matches that is basically happening for no reason with no build up. Something different happens in this one though as Henry stops the old school and traps him in a bear hug. Henry also hits a big slam and some splashes. It all goes wrong for Henry as he gets trapped in the triangle choke. Taker stamps him into the casket and it's over. Simply terrible. One of the worst ones on this list. It's an S. Shove it, man. The Undertaker vs Jerry Lawler, Wrestling Challenge 1994. I know it's not a main show, but I was intrigued, so shove it. Well, little did I know, soon all of you would be threatening to hit me with a brick after watching this one. Paul Bearer shines a light from the urn into Lawler's face to blind him, and this gives The Undertaker the advantage. Lawler uses brass knuckles to get even more of an advantage. Later on, Taker pushes Lawler towards the casket, and he runs around in circles like a dog waiting for walkies. Lawler goes back to using the knuckles again and again and again, and he finally knocks the dead man down. Lawler does get him in the casket, but Paul Bearer uses the urn to give The Undertaker more power. Taker is really struggling with Jerry Lawler, but he suddenly hits a tombstone and gets him in the casket and it's over. Yeah, this one sucked. This Stop ass. it, man! Survivor Series 1992, the first ever casket match in the WWF, but it's actually called a coffin match at this point, so shove it. It's the Uganda giant Kamala versus The Undertaker. Look at the size of that coffin. Now that's what you call a coffin. So will the first match suck? Let's find out. Kamala runs away from the dead man straight away whilst raising his hand at the taker. The messing around on the outside seems to work and it gives Kamala the advantage. He throws Taker into the corner but Taker no sells it. The dead man goes old school and he also clotheslines Kamala down. The giant suddenly wakes up and he starts chopping and clubbing at Taker and sends him out the ring. The Undertaker is distracted by Kamala's entourage which isn't helping him. He starts sending Taker into the steps on the outside. The beating continues as Kamala hits him in the back with a chair. Paul Bearer starts raising the urn in the air which was used to control old school Taker. Kamala hits three massive scoop slams and each time The Undertaker sits up. The Ugandan giant gets tired of Taker getting up so he hits him with three splashes. Let's see the dead man get up from that. The urn ends up in the ring and Kamala is scared of it. Whilst this is going on Taker wakes up and he smashes Kamala with the urn. In the original match it seems you have to pin your opponent first which Taker does. He then dumps Kamala into the coffin. <laughs> they actually have to nail the lid down for this one. So even when the lid is on the match isn't actually over. Taker drives the first nail in but doesn't do it cleanly and he keeps splitting the wood. If you need some work done for you, Taker is not the man to do it. Not a great match unfortunately, but there is worse on this list. Shut it's an S. Man. So the first ever casket match took place in the NWA in 1980. It was originally called a Texas Coffin Death Match and it was between Dusty Rhodes and Ivan Koloff. This one has really weird rules so bear with me. Also the coffin is in the ring and it looks more like a cow trough. It keeps getting in the way ruining the match. I'm not even sure it has a lid. Dusty Rhodes makes a pin of a small package and gets the free. You can apparently make as many pins as you want, but the only thing that matters is sending your opponent into the casket, so it's unclear why there's even pinfalls. Dusty wants to put Kolov into the coffin, but he can't because there's almost a 15 second intermission between the pinfalls. It's annoying and confusing, but it was the first ever, so definitely has some issues to iron out. Eventually Kolov tries to dive and he catches his shin on the trough, and then Dusty punches him into the trough to win. So I guess there was no lid. I'm not going to shit on this too much because at least it was violent and hard hitting. It's an S because it didn't make much oh, sense man. overall, but it's not the worst on this list. Undertaker vs The Rock on Raw May 17th 1999. This match doesn't start out too well because The Undertaker is limping to the ring to take on The Rock who has a broken arm. Undertaker's deep into his Ministry of Darkness gimmick here, so this casket match suits him more than ever at this point. Rocky takes it to The Undertaker as quickly as he can and it seems to be going okay until he's hit with a DDT. Undertaker then lowers his head too early and Rocky takes advantage with a net breaker. The Rock wants to hit the people's elbow but Taker sits up too soon so The Rock kicks him back down and hits the elbow. The Rock tries to roll Taker into the casket but Triple H appears at ringside and stops him. 
Undertaker tries to choke slam, which is stopped by The Rock, who finally uses his cast on his arm as a weapon. Rock gets ganged up on on the outside. Triple H smashes his cast with a sledgehammer on the steps, and Taker also smashes it into the casket. The Rock is rolled into the casket and the match ends. The corporate ministry lock the Rock in the casket. The game pushes the casket over, then he starts going nuts, hitting the casket with a sledgehammer. He's not messing around here by the looks of things. He completely destroys this thing by the time he's finished with it. It was fine. It was more of a spectacle than anything. I give it a D. Royal Rumble 2005, Hyde and Wright versus The Undertaker. This is actually a serious match as for a brief period of time they had high hopes for old Heidenreich in the WWE. Unfortunately, he's scared of coffins. Great idea for a wrestler who's supposed to be a monster. With every move Heidenreich does, he looks with fear at the casket. The Heidenreich contains Taker for a long time with his striking ability. Taker eventually stops him with a triangle choke whilst on the top rope and he keeps it on for a while. John Heidenreich looks like he's done, but Gene Snitsky appears in the ring beating down Taker. They hit a bad looking double suplex. Kane eventually makes the save with his brother appearing from the casket. Meanwhile, Heidenreich is still afraid of the casket, I guess because WWE didn't want him to have any chance of succeeding. Anyway, Heidenreich ends up with his head in the casket and Taker hits the leg drop across the casket. It was a really cool memorable spot. For some reason, that's not the end of the match though and Heidenreich's able to hit some sort of power slam. He forgets it's no pinfalls though. It's almost the end of him because Taker gives him the choke slam and a tombstone for game over. It's what, a D or something? Who cares? This next one is the first ever casket match in the WWF not including The Undertaker. Although it was supposed to be him in this match, he sends his ministry minions instead. It's Midian and Viscera versus Triple H in a handicap casket match. Triple H takes out Midian with a face buster before Viscera clotheslines him down. Big Vis follows up by squashing the game in the corner. Midian tries to hold the game down, but the last second the game pulls Midian into Viscera's splash. China appears in the ring and hits a low blow and the game delivers two pedigrees and dumps Midian into the casket for game over. It went two minutes and it sucked. Oh wait, Shane comes out and says it's not over because Big Vis hasn't been put in the casket. Viscera brings Midian back out the casket and Vis hits a Samoan drop, which I was okay with. Viscera then splashes him not once, not twice, but thrice and it sure wasn't nice. This time with no mistakes. Oh wow, they dump Triple H in the casket. Viscera and Midian have beaten Triple H. I really was not expecting that. I'm gonna have to give this a D just for the end result surprising me. From what I can tell, this next one is pretty much a house show at Madison Square Garden, but it's Vader versus The Undertaker in a casket match in 1997, so I had to catch this one. These two big bastards smash each other all over the ring. Then Taker starts smashing him around the arena with a chair. Vader turns it around after Taker gets smashed with his urn. Vader starts working on The Undertaker's nutsack, but he sort of gets caught with an Undertaker power slam. Taker hits the choke slam and a tombstone, which is pretty impressive on a guy the size of Vader. As they lift the lid, Mankind spills out, which isn't the first time you'll see that on this list, but it's still cool. Taker gets mandible clawed for like a second, and the lid is closed with Taker inside, so Vader wins. This one's a D. AW Dynamite from April 2022. We've got three casket matches from this year alone, which I wasn't expecting. And unfortunately, this is the worst one. This one's Darby Allen taking on Andre. Darby's getting dominated by like three guys before Sting appears in the crowd and beats them all up. Man, these crowds just make you want to watch the AEW show. This match is chaos, so many people and fights going on. Stinger dives off a balcony on three guys. In that time, Darby Allen tries a coffin drop, but he's caught and given a German on the outside. We see the coffin which has thumbtacks drilled into it. Andre carries Allen up the ramp and eventually drops him on it. He's dropped again, this time on a metal grate. It goes quiet for a bit until we get a Darby Allen suicide dive. Another geek from Andre's friendship group tries to stop him, but he's back body dropped into the tack covered lid. It's over. Not feeling this one in all honesty, but don't worry, AEW has much better casket matches. This one's a D. Smackdown 2008. Ugh. Chavo Guerrero in the main event versus The Undertaker in a casket match. One of these things is not quite like the other. Well, somebody was obviously thinking the same thing as me as the Big Show stomps out to the ring. He seems to just be an onlooker though. Chavo gets scared of the casket and gets booted straight away coming back into the ring. Chavo gets beaten up on the outside whilst the Taker and Show keep locking eyes. Undertaker finally takes some damage as he makes a mistake. It doesn't last long and Chavo gets caught off the dive and driven into the crowd barrier. Chavo wants to use a chair but that doesn't work for him either. The Snake Eyes and the Big Boot follow in the ring. Taker wants to tombstone Chavo, but the Big Show shuts the casket, which enables Chavo to land a steel share shot. He can't land the next one and he gets choke slammed. Big Show sees this as an opportunity and comes into the ring beating up The Undertaker. Taker eventually fights the big idiot off and he gives Chavo the tombstone for game over. It was actually not that bad. I usually enjoy David and Goliath type matches and this was all action, just nothing remarkable. It's a D. 
In Your House 2, 1995, The Undertaker vs. Karma. For some reason, I couldn't find this one on the network. Karma, who is a supreme fighting machine, runs away from The Undertaker and then he gets beaten up in the ring. Karma fights back with a suplex. Big Karma hits two elbow drops, but the Taker isn't hurt. Karma then takes him down with a scoop slam and he rolls him over to the casket and gets him in. Half, but it doesn't work. Taker is now awake and he goes old school and he throws Karma across the casket, but he immediately cuts Taker across the ropes. The Supreme Fighting Machine is awake now and he hits an axe kick. On the outside of the ring, Taker uses the casket lid as a weapon. He keeps opening it into Karma's face. Karma, who has a bad haircut, throws Taker into the steps in retaliation. Karma then puts him in the ring and puts on the worst half Boston crab I think I've ever seen. He basically lightly holds Taker's leg backwards. The match then turns extremely slow as Karma throws Taker into the corners and puts the bear hug on him. The hoe train this was not. Taker finally does something for backdrop suplex. He's quickly stopped in his tracks as he lowers his head too soon and gets a Karma pile driver. It looks like it should be over now, but he grabs Karma around the throat at the last second and puts him in the coffin. He's not in there for long, but he continues to get his ass handed to him by the Taker. Karma tries a tombstone, which Taker fights off and he hits a choke slam. He also has a big boot on Karma and then he sends him into the casket and the match is over. A long, slow match, but I thought it would be even worse than it was. It's a D. TNA Final Resolution 2010. Abyss of Mania. I don't want to watch it. Ugh. I make some serious sacrifices for the Shove It Squad. When I die from going insane at some of the rubbish I have to watch, I want my just dues. Abyss, who thinks he's the Undertaker slash Mankind versus the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. This wasn't long after the Pope had lost his push. Russo wanted to make him world champion, but the Hawk said no. So there's one thing that Russo did try to do that was positive, so shove it. So instead, the Pope gets to have this casket match. Abyss tries to throw the Pope in straight away, but he does an emergency stop. Pope brings his violent side out and uses his knees to drive the monster into the guardrail. He follows up with a jumping face plant and then he wants to hit a dive. Abyss catches him and throws him out the ring onto the coffin. That's completely turned the match now in the monster's favor for like a second, before Pope crawls for his legs and drop kicks him into the casket. It's still too early to put the bis away though. Pope hits a top rope flying shoulder block and a leg sweep clothesline takedown. Pope's wrestling a good match here and he hits an atomic drop and a diving bulldog. Abyss is now in the coffin, but he stops Pope by grabbing his throat and he puts him in the ring to hit the black hole slam. Again, Pope blocks the casket lid. He comes back into the ring with fury and he gives Abyss the double knees in the corner. The Pope is about to close the lid, but <laughs> Abyss punches through the side of the casket and pinches the Pope's nutsack. Abyss gives the Pope the choke slam into the casket to end the match. Rest in peace to the career of the Pope. Not bad, not great, middle of the road. The ending left a sour taste in my mouth. It's a D. AW Dynamite from the 10th of August 2022. Once again, it's Darby Allen, and this time he's taken on Brody King. Darby assaults his opponent with a thumbtack studded skateboard, which does a lot of damage to him. Brody doesn't like this and stamps the skateboard in half. Darby is being thrown all over the arena, it's fun to watch. Match turns a bit when Brody crashes through a table and the lights go out. And just like last time, Darby's now completely outnumbered. Darby's thrown all over the place by one of the followers who's called Buddy. Now Darby Allen is cannonballed for a table. Sting rises up out the coffin and has his little bat that takes out the house of black. Darby Allen chokes out Brody and he eventually falls into the coffin to end the match. Probably middle of the road as far as AEW coffin matches go. It's a C-. minus. Karma and The Undertaker actually had two casket matches. This one took place at SummerSlam 95. Taker starts out choking Karma above his head like he's nothing. It doesn't take long for Karma to make contact with the casket and he's terrified of it. Taker then goes old school quite early, although because this was the year 1995, I guess it wasn't exactly old school. Karma almost ends up in the coffin a couple more times before he cuts Taker off across the ropes. He hits a big top rope clothesline. Karma catches an Undertaker crossbody attempt and slams him, but Taker sits up. Both men take their turn in the coffin. Ted DiBiase then hits Taker from the outside of a chain. This chain used to be the Undertaker's urn, which the Million Dollar Corporation melted down into a chain. So that's the reason Karma is able to hang in there with the Taker, because he doesn't have his urn so he can't get his power. Paul Bearer tries to stop Ted DiBiase from beating up Taker on the outside, but he's too fat to make it around the ring. Karma drives Taker into the ring pole. He also suplexes the Undertaker onto the closed casket. Karma looks to deliver the finishing blow on the casket lid, but Taker sends him back into the ring for a huge crowd reaction. The crowd are soon silenced as Karma hits a power slam on him. Big Karma unfortunately gets confused and tries to pin the Taker whilst the Comrade team call him an idiot. The idiot proceeds to put on a sleep hole for a grand total of five minutes. The dead man finally gets him off with a backdrop. At this point, it's probably the longest match I've seen Charles Wright compete in. 
The Undertaker clotheslines Charles right over the top rope, but both men are in the casket now with the lid closed, and everyone seems confused. Karma tries to crawl out, but the Taker drags him back in. <laughs> Gotta love Karma's facial expressions here. Taker punches him down, but he doesn't attempt to close the lid, so Karma escapes again. The match continues with a Karma swinging neck breaker. The Undertaker responds with a choke slam, and the crowd love it. Taker then scoops him up and hits the tombstone pile driver, and he rolls Karma into the casket to win. This was the better of their two matches. If it wasn't for the crowd reaction, though, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed this one as much either. This one gets a C. Survivor Series 1994. It starts with Chuck Norris, who will be the special enforcer for this one. It's Yokozuna versus The Undertaker. Taker motions that Yoko is going in the casket, and he falls down with fear. Yoko actually lands a big splash in the corners to start the match, but it has zero effect on Taker somehow. The Undertaker knocks him out the ring and onto the casket. On the outside, Taker smashes Yokozuna into the steps, and in the ring, Taker hits old school, but it doesn't take the big man down. Taker tries harder to knock him down, but instead he gets a big Samoan drop, and I was also okay with this, for two reasons. I've never felt more accepting of something, to be honest. Yoko almost gets Taker in the casket before he gives him a cutter across the ropes. Yoko then takes a big fall to the mat. The dead man tries a running elbow, but somehow misses. Back on his feet, Yoko hits a rock bottom and a leg drop. It looks like Yoko has won because of that, but Taker blocks the casket lid. Taker then drags Yoko into the casket with him, and they both batter each other whilst in there. Yokozuna then has a period of dominance, but it's just a load of basic offense. The Undertaker eventually wakes up and he throws Yoko down. Taker also hits a top rope clothesline. The Undertaker starts slowly rolling Yokozuna towards the casket. It takes forever. King Kong Bundy appears at ringside and he's joined by Bam Bam Bigelow. Chuck Norris will now have to beat up the two big bold twins. IRS also appears in the ring with everyone distracted and he beats up The Undertaker. He puts on a sleep hold and throws The Undertaker into the casket. Yoko wants to shut the lid, but instead he gets a big purple hand around his throat. Suddenly, oh yes, a wild slap nuts appears. He gets kicked by Chuck Norris. The crowd are going berserk now as Taker starts his comeback. He hits a big running DDT and he boots Yoko to send him into the casket and the lid is shut. This one was okay, the crowd were massively into it, so it's enough for me to give it a C. Probably better than their other casket match they had. Okay, this next match is announced as the first ever handicap casket match. Poor Midian and Viscera, nobody ever cared about them or their achievements. No Mercy 2005, Randy Orton and Bob Orton versus The Undertaker. This one is needlessly long at over 20 minutes. It's a two on one beat down with Taker getting the odd hope spot. We get double Orton suplexes on Taker, which was cool to see. Unfortunately, Bob Orton tries to make the cover. They try a second one into the casket, but instead they get a double DDT. It looks like it's over after a chair shot to Orton and a Hell's Gate to the dad, but Randy blocks the door at the last moment. Taker does manage to eliminate Randy's dad, but he's still got to beat Orton Jr. A while later, Taker hits the last ride, but he still can't win as Bob Orton is in here with a fire extinguisher spraying the dead man in the face. Randy Orton hits the RKO. Taker takes a fire extinguisher to the skull. Orton Jr. and Taker both hide into the casket for a while before Randy emerges and smashes Taker with a chair. Randy and Bob Orton win the match. Randy continues smashing the casket with an axe after the match, and then they cover it with petrol and set it on fire. It was fine, just too long for no reason. It's a C. Next up, we got Undertaker vs. Mark Henry from WrestleMania 22 in 2006. The Druids make their entrance and bring out the casket. And this match wasn't too long before WWE gave Mark Henry his nickname as the Silverback in one of the most tone-deaf ideas they've ever had that Mark Henry has openly stated he despised. Early on in the match, Undertaker isn't able to take down Mark Henry, which is weird considering this is the same person who's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Big Show, Yokozuna, Carly, and other large wrestlers. Undertaker slams Henry into the stairs, but Henry no-sells it and smashes him into the stairs in return. Henry begins to dominate Taker from here. Mark Henry goes for his version of the 619, but Taker moves and he lands feet first in the casket. Then the two both get in the casket and start exchanging strikes. Undertaker tries to get back into it, but Henry hits the world's strongest slam and goes for the pin like a big idiot. The story that keeps being told in this match is that Taker makes a comeback but every time he makes the comeback, it's only a couple moves in that Henry stops him in his tracks. Henry has been dominant this whole match, by the way. Taker has got barely any offense in. Taker hits a scuffed looking powerbomb, which Michael Cole screams, calling it the last ride. I don't know what last ride you've ever seen before, but that was not the last ride, Chief. 
He hits a scary looking dive, looks to be in control before hitting a tombstone pile driver and putting him in the casket and shutting it to win after he had his ass beat for the entire match. The match was fine, I think we all knew that Mark Henry was never winning though. In your house, Beware of the Dog 1996 Intercontinental Title Match. The IC Champion is Gold Dust with Marlena versus The Undertaker with Paul Bearer. Taker appears in the ring behind Gold Dust and then he floors him as he turns around. We have a rare gold casket here. Gold Dust dumps in his nappy when he sees the casket. You have to assume this was Gold Dust's casket, otherwise, why would it be covered in gold? Taker frays him out the ring on top of the casket, then he frays him into the steel steps. They head back into the ring where Taker hits a hard slam and a leg drop. The Undertaker then proceeds to go old school. This seems to wake Goldust up, who hits a slam of his own, but Taker no-sells it and gets up. It's really not going well for Goldie, who can't hit his slap from the floor. Goldust decides to bring out the big guns and he hits a tombstone. Again, Taker sits up. Goldust has to fight hard to try and keep the Undertaker down. Taker gets rolled into the casket, but Goldust is unable to shut the lid and the Taker fights out. They head back into the ring where Taker hits him with a big boot and the gold man sends him out of the ring to calm him down. Goldust finds TV cables out there and he starts to choke The Undertaker. The Gold One continues trying to put Taker to sleep with the sleeper hold and he seems to succeed. He drags The Undertaker's limp body over to the casket and he gets him in. Goldust tries to shut the lid but Taker blocks it with his arm at the last second. Taker knocks Goldust over by pushing the lid over. The dead man has got a surprisingly low amount of shots on Goldust but he starts to find his mark. The Undertaker tries to use a chair but Goldust kicks him over. It's easy to forget how strongly Goldust was booked at this point. Back in the ring, Goldust hits a power slam to the dead man. Then it all goes wrong. Goldust goes high risk with the clothesline and he tries to pin Taker. He keeps getting annoyed that no one is counting the pin. I guess no one told him how to win the casket match. Goldust tries to go up top again where Taker throws him off with an arm drag. Taker nails the tombstone pile driver and it should be over. As he goes to roll Goldust into the casket, Mankind somehow appears in there. He puts the mandible claw on Taker and then Undertaker is shut away in the gold casket. Gold Dust is the winner, and this is from the Taker vs. Rusev from Greatest Royal Rumble 2018. This match was weird alone, just for all the shenanigans that took place before the match. It was well known that at the time, Rusev was very unhappy in WWE and came close to leaving. When WWE announced the match, Rusev responded on Twitter saying, Bury me lightly, brother. But then it was announced that this match would no longer be taking place, and Taker would be facing Jericho instead. And then, not too long after, it was announced that, oh no, Rusev and Taker is back on. This all took place in the space of about a couple of days. Rusev is introduced by Aiden English, who sings a song about Taker. What a great duo these guys were as Rusev Day. Taker then of course does his 5 minute entrance and at the start of the match Rusev refuses to get in the ring so Taker follows him and beats him down but Rusev begins to take it to Taker. Taker hits old school and throws him on top of the casket, he is absolutely destroying Rusev who is getting no offense in. Taker gets Rusev in the casket but English stops the lid from being closed, Rusev hits a kick and finally gets back into it but it doesn't last long as Taker downs him with a strike. Rusev is able to get the accolade in, but Taker sits right up and goes to the choke slam. But we get another strike exchange before Taker hits the choke slam. He throws Rusev in the casket, choke slams and tombstones English, then throws him in there with him and shuts the casket lid to win the match. Undertaker, sure as hell, buried Rusev lightly, as Rusev requested. Smackdown 2015 The Big Red Machine Kane vs. Daniel Bryan. This one has a storied rivalry. Kane starts out with a slam and a leg drop and he tries to put Brian away, straight away. Brian fights back kicking Kane plenty of times he tries to put Kane in the casket but it's too early. Brian tries again with a drop kick which causes Kane to bail from the ring. Both men have almost moments in a really back and forth affair. Brian goes high risk to the outside but his second attempt leads to him being shunted into a ring pole. Kane gets Brian in the casket but somehow his weedy little legs are stronger than Kane's massive arms. Brian dives out but he gets a punch to the gut for his efforts. The match goes back to the ring where Kane hits a DDT. Kane brings a chair in then because he's struggling to beat Debright. Then he starts throwing him into the casket lid. It doesn't hurt Brian who keeps kicking Kane, leaving him teetering on the ring apron. Kane quickly choke slams him, but it's still not over. Daniel Bryan puts the yes lock on in the casket, but he still can't close the lid. Nothing Bryan does seems to affect Kane enough. At least it seems that way until Bryan gives Kane one more kick than he can handle and Bryan wins. This match was missing the violence of a casket match from earlier years and Brian did his best to make the gimmick seem less intimidating. 
but it was still a decent matchup for us to see. Raw 2002, Triple H versus Kane, casket match. This one's deeply personal with the Katie Vick storyline. The game looks like he's regretting this one as it gets beaten back and forth and power slammed. Kane boots him off the ring apron into the casket but the game runs out straight away. Kane connects with another slam before the fight goes outside of the ring. The game smashes him with the ring bell. Back in the ring Triple H hits a spine buster but Kane sits up. Triple H does manage to keep Kane down with the DDT and he rolls him towards the coffin before Kane strikes back. The game hits a second rope suplex and he believes he has Kane sufficiently weakened again. He chokes Triple H in the casket. Kane then fights off a pedigree attempt and he tries the tombstone into the casket but the game reverses it. Triple H puts on the sleeper hold which unlike many of these matches actually only lasts for 10 seconds. Kane has a brief spell of dominance now as he hits a big boot and a clothesline. Kane can't land the choke slam as the game hits him in the slash zone. A steel chair then comes into the match but Kane continues to sit up. HBK Shawn Michaels suddenly climbs out the casket and he beats up Triple H and hits the sweet chin music. Kane sits up and Shawn shrugs and leaves as the crowd laugh. Kane hits the choke slam and he sends the game into the casket to win the match. Shame he needed so much help to beat him and it's even more of a shame that it wasn't for the title. But this one was certainly okay, I give it a C. Let's mix it up a bit shall we. Next up we've got some Impact Wrestling Knockout action. From the May 31st 2018 edition of Impact, it's a last rights match as Sue Young challenges Ali for the Knockouts title. And this is nothing like the original last rights match with Abyss and Sting where the coffin floated into the sky, it's just a normal casket match. This is a much slower match compared to the others I have or will discuss today, and it's the first time I've ever seen a women's casket match. Suyon gets Ali in the coffin early on, but Ali is able to fight out of it. Ali gets in control and brings a chair in and hits a code breaker with the chair. Ali super kicks Sue off the apron into the coffin for a close call, and as she goes to close the lid, Sue Young gets the mandible claw in there and gets Ali in the coffin and shuts the lid to win the match and win the knockouts title. Lucha Underground, ready for war. You thought I forgot about these dudes? Oh, hell no. Milmatez, who's jumped straight away by his opponent Prince Puma with a kick and then a big dive down the arena. Mill isn't really affected by that and he bowls Puma at some chairs. Then he throws him through an office door. Puma pushes a coffin off its wheels and then proceeds to drag it around the arena. What a fool. Should have just used the wheels. Mill gives him a power bomb onto the casket. They take quite a lot of time in this match to set furniture up and it all leads to Mill hitting a spear on Puma for a table. Puma finally does something now as he hits a bunch of kicks and leaves Mill flat on his back on a coffin. He nails him with a springboard 630 on the coffin. He also hits a chair shot on the coffin whilst Mill's head is trapped. Puma then gets two tables set up on the outside of the ring, but all of that leaves Mill with time to recover and he hits a choke slam on the coffin. Puma isn't out of the match yet though. As he gets up, Mill tries to hit him with a flatliner, but Puma flatlines out of the move and kicks him. Then they go outside the ring where Puma drop kicks a chair into his face. He tries to dive, but Mill stops him on the top and he hits a choke slam through the tables. Unfortunately, the next five minutes is spent wasted as Mill tries to set up a coffin on the wheels from earlier. He gives him another flatliner on the floor on the outside and then shoves him in the coffin to end the match. While that was certainly different from the entry so far, it was a lot better than some of them. A lot more violent too. The match lost points for the crazy amount of time the wrestlers spent setting up their spots. I'm going to give this one a C. Now, what if I told you there are two better Lucha Underground casket matches on this list? Stay tuned. TNA Destination X 2007. Oh no. Probably the most famous casket match in recent memory. And it's not exactly remembered for good reasons. And it's not even called a casket match, it's called a last rights match. But don't let that name fool you, it's just essentially a casket match. It's probably one of the wackiest storylines ever going into it as well. The icon Sting reveals to the audience that Abyss shot his father three times. And Sting has been trying to turn him good, but Father James Mitchell wants Abyss to be evil. Sting has threatened to kill Abyss for this pay-per-view. Will he manage it? Let's find out. Well, if you're expecting a hardcore type matchup, you'll be happy. Sting managed to hit the Scorpion death drop in the first minute or so, but he's overconfident and misses his splash in the corner and crashes into some plastic candles. I'm not sure why these were necessary, they look so cheap. Abyss calls for the coffin it's slowly lowered from the ceiling as smoke pours out. The crowd are loudly chanting, Fire Russo. Sting fights out the casket after his first visit in there. 
It gets worse now because Abyss has a fake looking tombstone. The crowd are in complete silence as Sting applies the Deathlock. Abyss taps out, but no submission here. Sting forgets that the tombstone is supposed to look like it's heavy and he picks it up like it's nothing. He proceeds to smash it into the monster's face with a baseball bat. Abyss is now in the coffin, but Sting can't close the lid. Moments later, Abyss chokeslams him on top of the coffin, which crumbles like a piece of trash. Abyss struggles to lift up another tombstone, even though Sting has killed that gimmick. It's set up across two chairs like it's a table. Moments later, Sting knocks him off the top rope and through the tombstone. Abyss is now in the coffin, and that's the whole match. The most famous part of this match is still to come. The coffin is raised up into the air on a platform, and the last thing you hear on this segment is the Fire Russo chant again. There wasn't as much this match as I remembered. The props all looked so cheap and silly, but at least this wasn't boring like some of the other entries on this list. It did feel like a bit of a waste of time, admittedly. This wasn't some epic match that they'd probably hoped for. It's the middle of a road C for me. Next up, Taker vs Big Show from Survivor Series 2008. The casket is brought out by druids for some reason. Uh, Taker early on nearly gets Big Show in the casket and the two just begin brawling. As they make their way to the announce table, Show clears the table but then Taker is able to get the upper hand and leg drops him of all moves through the table. Surely that's going to hurt you more. Show gets back into it and manages to roll Taker into the casket, but he tells the ref to close it when he has to close it. Alas, he takes too long and Taker is able to stop the lid being closed. Big Show, you absolute buffoon. He makes a comeback and chokeslams Show off the second rope. Taker gets Show in the casket, but Show blocks the lid being closed, gets out of it, and then flips the casket over and breaks it and starts walking out the match, which cues Taker to sit up, Big Show tries walking away but Pyro goes off, Show takes down Taker and goes to leave again but then the Druids music hits and they all come out carrying a new casket, what on earth is going on? Show turns the casket upright and the two are brawling back and forth and then Taker out of nowhere throws Show into the casket, it falls onto the ground and the lid slams shut. A pretty out of nowhere anticlimactic ending but a good match overall, I would say. NXT Halloween Havoc 2022. Yeah, this one actually happened in the last week or two. It's the most recent casket match on this list. This match was made by Chucky the Doll for some reason. Grayson Waller taken on Apollo Crews. What a contrast to the other wrestlers who've appeared in this video. The first big shot is Grayson Waller hitting a super kick that almost takes his opponent's head off. He follows it with a wacky diving elbow drop. He sits up in a way to mock The Undertaker. We're now outside of the ring. Big shout out for the set here, it's cool. It's great to see WWE putting some effort into their sets once again. They both tease suplexes and eventually Waller is hit with an overhead belly to belly. We are five minutes into the match and I'm yet to even see the casket. Cruz drop kicks Waller onto the commentary desk. Waller steals a pen and stabs Cruz in the eyelid. They fight on the ring apron where I finally see the casket for the first time. It's tiny. They're fighting on the top rope until Waller shoves Cruz off who crashes through the tiny casket. And after some debate, the lights go out. Apollo Cruz is now on the ramp surrounded by druids and apparently this match isn't actually over. Cruz is fired up and he nails a Scott Hall special with a sack of shit on the outside of the ring. Just in time for his birthday. Rest in peace, bad guy. They carry on wrestling in the ring. We get to see that a much nicer and newer casket has arrived and Walker's in it. He manages to escape and slams it on Apollo's head whilst it looks like it's about to break. Waller can't shut the lid either. Apollo with a big throw on Waller to the floor on the outside. He also hits a frog splash off the casket. We get a double tombstone reversal with more tributes to the dead man, ending with Cruz dropping Waller on his knees. Still the casket isn't shut. Waller tries a choke slam into the casket but he can't manage it and Cruz hits a sort of spine buster into the casket and it ends the match. I enjoyed it but it was the least hardcore match on this entire list. But at least the wrestling was good. This match felt like one giant tribute to the stars of yesteryear. Not sure it's meant to be like that but I'll give it a C plus anyway. TNA 2003, D'Lo Brown versus Sunny. Don't look at my ass, Siaki. Oops, wrong script. Wait, what? No, they actually did have a casket match. It seems to be because Sunny cost D'Lo a shot at the world title and they've been feuding back and forth. This also features two of my favorite all-time wrestlers. It seems to be a bit like the first ever casket match with a casket in the ring here. The casket has two doors on it for some reason. They're both slammed onto Siaki. D'Lo has the match won in about 20 seconds, but Siaki's manager Trinity makes the save. D'Lo gives him a spinning heel kick and a suplex. Interestingly, D'Lo sets the casket up in the corner, which was something new at the time. D'Lo sends Don't Look At My Ass into the casket. He's playing possum though, and D'Lo crashes into it. Man, this is some cheap ass light dented tin caskets. This is what happens when you have a state funeral, presumably. Siaki drives the casket into D'Lo. For some reason, Siaki rips out all the padding. Sonny then has him trapped in the corner, he shoves the casket into him, pretty cool. It all goes wrong for Sonny suddenly as D'Lo hits him with the sky high on the casket, and then the low down on top of the casket. 
It gets even cooler when Umaga suddenly debuts in TNA screaming what's up in D'Lo's face. He gives him a Samoan drop and a top rope splash. They shut D'Lo in the casket and were done in 5 minutes. After sitting through 20 similar matches this was a nice change. It was batshit crazy in typical TNA fashion but I enjoyed it. I would call it the perfect short match and I give it a B. Staying with TNA, this one is from Impact in 2014. We're at a weird time in the Bully Ray gimmick at this point. The Aces and Eights have just finished and Bully is doing this weird depressed poetry gimmick. It's basically a rip off of mine. He also keeps quoting Coolio for some reason. It's Bully Ray versus Mr. Anderson who was responsible for the end of the Aces and Eights which was Bully Ray's faction. They had a great TNA segment where they buried the Aces and Eights at a funeral parlour so I guess that's why we're having a casket match. We're also in Manchester England so Bully gets heat by wearing a Liverpool top. Just like the crowd, Anderson hates Liverpool and he spears Bully down. Anderson continues the intensity with a net breaker. I have to point out that red is definitely not Bully Ray's colour. That's all good because Anderson takes the top off and starts choking Bully with it. Mr Anderson starts stamping on the top as the crowd cheer of happiness. Anderson's messing around and he gets clubbed from behind. Bully also kicks a chair into his face in the ring. As he gets up both men now have chairs and Anderson smashes one into the other. During the break Mr Anderson almost shuts the big man in the casket. A table gets introduced into the match which is probably not a good thing with Bully Ray around. As he turns around he gets a big boot straight away. Anderson's bleeding from his nose and Bully starts rubbing the blood of Anderson onto his own face. Bully is now in full control and he tries to suplex Anderson and he succeeds from the top. The casket is also in the ring and Bully chucks him in. Unfortunately for Bully he takes too long playing with the lid and Anderson manages to wake up and block the lid from going down. Bully snaps and grabs a chair. Anderson punches him in the slash zone. <laughs> Bully completely oversells it as usual. Anderson is out the casket now but Bully is still smashing him with a chair. Bully Ray picks him up and he power bombs him for a table. It should be over now. Bully tries to power drive Anderson in the casket but he wakes up and Anderson smashes him with the mic check into the casket. <laughs> he has the sense to still throw the Liverpool top into the casket with him and then he slams the lid down. As this is TNA the lid doesn't fit properly. I'm just nitpicking now but I like my casket matches to have a legit looking casket where the loser looks like they're being locked away and can't escape. This certainly did not have that look. Either way it's still a good match, I give it a B grade, both guys got the crowd involved and you could feel the hatred, one of the better matches on this list. Lucha Underground, graver consequences for the Lucha Underground title. Well they certainly have created a spooky atmosphere fitting for a Halloween video this time. Mil Matez vs Matanza Cueto. This dude looks straight out of a slasher horror film, I'm hyped. The match starts with Mill trying to float over in the corner but instead he gets a massive German and a clothesline. Matanza sends him straight out the ring crashing into the coffin. In fact there's several coffins. The manager Katrina gets involved and hits Matanza with a chair and out of nowhere Mill spears him into a pile of chairs. There's three coffins lined up and Matanza hits a power bomb onto one of them. The two guys start fighting on the ring apron and Mill Matuez hits downward spiral onto the three coffins. It looks like a car crash here. Mill powers one of the coffins into the ring and sets it up in the corner. Mill gets distracted for a bit and Matanza hit two gut wrench suplexes without letting go but he can't hit the third as Mill spears him. Matanza starts using a spike which is part of the ring. It doesn't have too much effect and Mill choke slams him on the coffin. Mill starts putting on a knight's glove. I think it's chain link so it's a weapon. Matanza stops him with a low blow. The match slows down a bit as they move coffins around the arena. For the first time Mill goes into a blue coffin but he blocks it. Then he punches a hole through the coffin with his metal glove. He then uses the ring bell as a weapon. Mill's manager Katrina gets taken out of a chair shot to the back. She then gets shut away in a red coffin. Mill hits a big dive to the outside on Matanza. They start fighting in the ring where Mill hits a power slam and he gets Matanza in the coffin but it's blocked. He gets up and delivers a power bomb on the coffin. Suddenly Matanza hits a beautiful swing in slam shades of Norman Smiley straight into the coffin and the match is done. Really enjoyed that one. It's definitely a B from me. AEW Fighter Fest 2019, Darby Allen vs Ethan Page. Allen starts out like a nutcase with no regard for his own body, but I think that's kind of his gimmick. Ethan Page's friend climbs out of the coffin so the icon Sting joins the match to take him out. We get two fights for a while which the camera struggles to keep track of. They fight in the crowd where Darby has his dive caught and Ethan starts throwing him around like a nutcase. The ring is torn apart now and Darby Allen is able to make his comeback using parts of the ring. As they fight in the coffin now I can't help but think this crowd's just great, it's the opposite of that WWE casket match we watched earlier. Ethan Page gets a stunner off the step but he responds with a power bomb on the steps. Now Darby Allen dives with a skateboard on Ethan's back and that is enough to win it. 
But Darby Allen isn't done, and for one last moment, which even in this day and age where wrestling fans have seen everything, I have to say that Darby Allen hitting the coffin drop through the coffin was really cool. A fun match which the crowd loved. It's a B. Lucha Underground Grave Consequences. This is the original of our Lucha Underground trio of casket matches, and with most original things, this is the best. It's Mil Matuez versus Phoenix. Mil dives on Phoenix before he even has a chance to get in the ring. Phoenix starts using his speed to his advantage and he hits a massive scent onto the outside of the ring. He also hits a DDT on the coffin. Jesus, he tries another dive but he gets blocked by a coffin, that was brutal looking. Mill tears the ring apart as we saw earlier and he uses the hook that holds the ropes in. He busts Phoenix open. They both head up the steps go to a balcony. Mill Matuez tries a suplex off the top but Phoenix blocks it. Nothing really happens up there in the end and they come back to ringside where Mill hits a powerbomb on the commentary desk. It doesn't break like the WWE ones. Back in the ring, Mill hits Phoenix with an overhead suplex into the coffin. Mill also hits some sort of throw from the top rope. Blood is gushing out of Phoenix at this point. They fight all over the arena which leads to Phoenix hitting a swan tom off the stage. Less than a minute later, it's a moonsault from the crowd. Phoenix wins this one with a rope walk into a stomp which knocks Mill into the coffin. This one gets an A from the Hawk, go find it and watch it. And the best casket match of all time is presumably the most famous casket match of all time. For the WWF title, it's at the Royal Rumble 1998 and it's HBK Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. Shawn Michaels tries to use his speed and hit and run tactics in the early going. Michaels even tries an athletic crossbody from the corner, but Taker impressively catches him in a choke. Michaels continues his speed game, but he regrets it as Taker throws him out the ring, catching the casket on the way out. This legit screwed up Michaels' back. It's all Undertaker now as he gives HBK a body press on the outside of the ring. Michaels is now in the ring, but not for long as he's sent out taking out a cameraman in the process. Michaels tries a top rope dive, which Taker flawlessly turns into a power slam. Michaels almost gets put away in the casket, but he blocks it with his arm. When he comes out, he throws powder in Taker's eyes. This enables HBK to hit a moonsault to a standing Taker. They head outside where Michaels turns an Irish whip around and sends Taker over the years. HBK hits a brutal looking pile driver on the steps. The sound it made really added to the effect. Triple H starts helping his little buddy out by using his crutches. This match would now be over for 95% of wrestlers. The dead man is pushed into the casket, but he's still got something left in the tank. As it's customary with almost all casket matches we've seen, Michaels uses a sleeper hole to try and beat the taker, but it never seems to work as taker backdrops him. Michaels is really busting out all the big moves here as he nails the top rope elbow. Then he smacks up the band and hits sweet chin music. Michaels wastes too much time putting Taker in the casket and he gets squeezed in the nutsack. Undertaker is now walking tall with the big boot. He quickly gets that karma casket spot from earlier with Taker dragging Michaels back into the casket and closing the lid again. Michaels fights off and runs back into the ring again where we get a massive choke slam. Then, oh wow, Taker hits a tombstone pile driver off the ring apron into the casket. It's not over though because six men appear and attack the Undertaker. The lights then suddenly go out and now Kane is here. Kiddies watching, take note, Kane was taken a lot more seriously back in 1998. Kane beats up the six men in the ring with ease, but Michaels is now back out of the casket. And for that had a bit of everything, and even when the match was over, it wasn't really over because we got the cool coffin visual on fire. The best casket match on this list, so if you're going to watch one, make sure it's this one. A for sure, and if you don't agree with that, you're a whore. Make sure you check out Top 10 Wrestling's channel whenever you get a chance. I'd like to thank Marky for inviting me to be on this video. I had a great time watching all these casket matches, especially that Undertaker vs. Yokozuna one. If you want to see more stuff from me, uh, you can check out my channel, Top 10 Wrestling, link down below in the description. Lots of wrestling content out on there. So feel free to check me out and subscribe, but thank you very much to Marky. Remember, he is the biggest Orlando Jordan fan going. He's also the place to go to if you want current Impact Wrestling news and videos. He actually likes them and gives them a fair shot, unlike me. I just make fun of them. That's about it then. Have a nice Halloween one and all. Try not to smash any windows or a smasher in the face. It's all Hallows Eve and the Shove It Squad run the place.